The minister has also advised students on what checks and balances need to be in place in order to verify the credibility of their institutions. The Department of Higher Education and Training has the statutory authority to regulate the private provisioning of college programs and higher education programs. Whilst the legislation and administration are in place, the mushrooming of illegal colleges and illegal practices is still a concern for the department. I'm a fly by night. This is an area where the department works with law enforcement agencies in the country. The public is therefore requested to be vigilant and not fall for the bogus operators who are only interested in money and do not offer accredited programs. Potential students may verify the registration of private colleges and private higher education institutions by consulting the respective registers on the website of the department at www.dhet.gov.za. And Zimande also called for criminal charges to be instituted against those defrauding the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. He says some students are applying for funding using false information. According to the analysis performed to a cohort of 2021 students, NESFAS has established that 38,744 continuing students in Tibet colleges and universities continue to be funded even though they have realized substantial improvement in household income over the fund period. Just to show that we are not thumb sucking this, our, from this analysis, 32,654 students benefiting from NESFAS have a household income that exceeds 400,000 rands. Yet the limit for NESFAS students is family income of 350,000. Our analysis further shows that 7,081 of these students have a household income that exceeds 1 million rand, and 632 students are benefiting from SNESFAS, yet they have a, a household income that exceeds 2 million rands per annum. These students will be defunded. However, I would like to say to NESFAS chairperson and the CEO in front of me here, it's not enough just to defund. You must take and lodge criminal charges of fraud in such instances. Though, of course, the affected students may, may, may appeal and say, well, it's not true that my family is earning this money. But those that who have been found to be defrauding the scheme, we must take criminal action. While staying with education matters, the Higher Education Department projects over 1.1 million enrollments in public tertiary institutions in 2022. As COVID-19, of course, remains a challenge, Deputy Minister Budi Manamela has also been conducting a public awareness campaign. This is in both uh, Pretoria and Johannesburg. Manamela joins us now. Good evening to you and thank you so much for your time. So we're very much getting ready to start a brand new academic year. The junior phases of the school level have already indicated they're ready to go full swing in terms of the return to school. As the higher education department, what's the approach that you would want your institutions of higher learning to take? Well, look, firstly, I really would want to see um, all students who are contact uh, students in all our universities and TVET colleges uh, returning back to uh, to campus and of course there are a whole range of issues that we need to take into consideration the capacity of institutions to maintain the uh, necessary social distancing uh, the availability of resources for them to support students in maintaining the protocols uh, you know things such as keeping on your mask um, you know things that happens in accommodation students sharing uh, and all of that and I think most institutions have been following the guidelines that we've issued uh, from higher health as it relates to how lectures are going to be conducted, how accommodation is mm -hmm. going to be set up. Uh, because if a, if a, if a student, uh, you know, registered at a higher education 
educational institution for contact. They want to be on campus. I mean, I was with students from uh, some of the universities that were graduating. They'll say, look, we've graduated, but we've never set foot uh, on, on campus. So we want to see that changing from this year. But of course, certain protocols will have to be followed, uh, you know, based and, and, and from one institution to another. All of those conditions are going to be, uh, you know, differing. Our aim still remain, uh, you know, to save lives because we don't want to see higher education institutions uh, contributing to the spike, uh, you know, towards the fifth wave. Uh, we also don't want, uh, you know, lives generally being lost. But importantly, we want students to get quality education. So those are some of the considerations we will be making when universities reopen. Uh, uh, you know, or classes resume uh, in a week or two. Of course, the context that you're going to have to be contending with is one of a South Africa where there's enormous inequality, and that is often exacerbated in the higher education system because we have those students that are able to still make it through the year mm -hmm. by virtue of being able to have consistent access to uh, lectures, you know, having laptops that work when they need to work. Mm -hmm. And the experience over the last two years is that institutions of higher learning have not been consistent in providing for those who are most vulnerable and who mm. need those resources the most. What happens to them now mm. if they don't have that space of mm. not being able to come back to campus mm. but still expected uh, to, you know, to live up to a certain expectation mm. in terms of their outputs? Look, I think quite to the contrary. Mm. I mean, the study which we made in 2020 was that 76% of students needed support in terms of digital devices, in terms of connectivity, um, so that they can link up with their lectures and all of that. Uh, we've actually seen a spike uh, of students now attending their lectures. Some lectures were saying, look, ordinarily, uh, when students are on campus, we'll have like 30 to 40 percent uh, attendance. But with online learning, we've seen a spike as it relates to that. Mm -hmm. Now, with that 76 percent, 87 percent of those who were supported were supported through the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. Yes, we've learned various lessons over the last two years uh, since, uh, uh, you know, the COVID pandemic. Uh, and those includes, for instance, uh, you know, supporting uh, institutions to be able to provide connectivity. The minister indicated today that we will be having a discussion with the Minister of uh, Communications so that we are able to have a dedicated spectrum that specifically focus on education, which means that, uh, you know, uh, some of the challenges that we've had in the past, uh, uh, you know, uh, are going to, uh, uh, you know, be resolved. But generally we know, you know, whether you're a student at, uh, at an institution or not, we still have those challenges of connectivity. But we think looking at the performance of students over the last two years, under the pandemic, we think that, uh, you know, we have fairly done well uh, as the higher education uh, sector in responding to the pandemic, in improving the results, in improving the quality of education, but also in ensuring that we save lives. Well, we'll talk more about NASPAS and some of the challenges yeah. that they're experiencing now when it comes to this current uh, financial year and uh, the registrations of students who are waiting uh, for funding as we speak. We're in conversation with the Deputy Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation, Woody Manamela. Right, we're looking at the state of higher education as we get ready uh, to kickstart another academic year for the class of 2022. The Deputy Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation, Wudi Manamela, in studio with us. Uh, Minister Manamela, I don't know when we're going to get to a point where it's the beginning of the school year and NASPAS that has so many students that rely on it. I mean, we just look at our TVET colleges, 90% of students in TVET colleges get their funding from NASPAS. Yes. Institutions of higher learning, that figure I think is sitting at about 50%. Mm. But these administrative issues that NASPAS has year on year mm. don't seem to end. What is happening at NASPAS? Look, I mean, I'm, and, and I'm, I'm certain the, the chair and CEO of NASPAS will be talking to uh, the public in the course of the week. Uh, but I want to address the issue of, uh, of uh, well, let me start with the TVET colleges. We have a big challenge in the country. So every student who go to grade 12, what they see themselves as is a university student. So they go and apply at universities 
Um, and once they reject it or their performance uh, at matric is not, or at grade 12, is not well, then they resort to go to TVET colleges. What that does is that they then have to, they, they then apply late at TVET colleges. And that's why I want to urge all grade 12 learners who are starting at the beginning of this year, please look not only at our universities, but also look at our TVET colleges and the a whole range, a spectrum of programs that they are providing and do also apply for those because some, in, some students apply for three, four universities and then when they get rejected, then that's when they opt to go to TVET colleges, which then gives us an administration nightmare. So hundreds of, thou I mean, uh, hundreds of thousands of students uh, are now opting after being rejected by universities to walk in into TVET colleges, which means that TVET colleges will then have to align their registration targets. They'll then have to align those applications with NSFAS, uh, uh, you know, applications and all of that. So, so that's where the crisis lies. But the second major challenge was that we had had uncertainty in terms of the shortfall for funding of uh, particularly new students, but also continuing students. And as the minister said today, uh, we have now resolved that shortfall and therefore communication has gone out uh, to continuing students and also to, uh, you know, uh, to new students that whether, uh, you know, they will be funded or not by NSFAS. So the challenge wasn't necessarily with National Student Financial Aid Scheme this year. It was more the challenge with the, uh, mm. uh, you know, with the national fiscals and allocation uh, into the, uh, into uh, the NASFAS budget and our budget. So that's been resolved. So, so, so what exactly happened? Because it's 9.6 billion rand worth of a shortfall. This is not small money. If it was going to be missing, somebody should have noticed much sooner than January that there was going to be this deficit. Look, so, so um, we, uh, government makes uh, 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 budgeting on a medium term expenditure framework, which means over a three year period. Now, over the last two years, there have been major challenges which, uh, you know, uh, our economy has been confronted with, including the fact that many students who ordinarily would not have qualified for NASFAS now qualifies. Uh, I mean, uh, if you look at the 20, 20, uh, I mean, 2019, 2020 uh, financial year, mm -hmm. about 500,000, 600, I mean, 500,000 students applied for NSFAS. For the following year, about 700,000 students applied. And for this year, close to a million students mm -hmm. applied for NSFAS. No, and, and, and it's, it's, it's not because of their own making. It's because some of them, their parents lost jobs. Uh, you know, some of them were uh, retrenched. Some of them uh, had reduced income. It therefore means they now qualify for, uh, you know, NSFAS. So that on its own presents a major challenge in terms of, uh, uh, you know, planning uh, as it relates to, uh, uh, you know, the, the medium term expenditure framework. Now, over and above that, if you'd recall, the president has uh, asked that we investigate how we're going to be, uh, you know, fixing student funding. That, uh, the ministerial task team on that has finalized its report, and I think discussions into the, uh, and consultations with stakeholders are going to be finalized, and the minister will be making a statement as it relates to that. And we're hoping that once that has been finalized, we will then, uh, you know, see all of these challenges mm -hmm. being a thing of the past. And I think the final thing, Kathy, um, is that NESFAS also now introduced a new system. So any student who is an, whose, whose parents are SASA beneficiaries automatically qualifies, and they automatically, which presents on its own a huge uh, challenge in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the demand for financial resources. So I think a combination of all of these factors meant that we have the ch current challenge that we have, uh, which has been there, I think, for the last two to three years. Uh, yeah. so, so ultimately, what does it mean? Because again, um, I think of the report that was given last year in terms of the funding that NASFAS has been administering to students mm. and the fact that they're going to be doubling that funding going into the 2022 academic year. And yet we're sitting on a situation where there are shortfalls. Does that mean that ultimately we have these commitments of funding mm. to students because of the need that has been created for the funding, yeah. but we don't necessarily have the money? Yes, that's what it means. It means that we had to go somewhere to look for the money. So um, to... to 
um, to say this is what we're going to do. Uh, these are the number of students that we're expecting to enter the system, uh, you know, vis-a-vis -vis what money we have. So that's the kind of balance that we have to, that, that uh, you know, we, we, we had to do. One automatically thinks about uh, reappropriations of the budget, right? So chances are there's, there's no new money coming into the system. So you're having to take money from somewhere else. Uh, in order to foot this this bill, yeah. where are you taking money from? Well, I think Treasury will have to respond to that. But a whole range of reallocations had to be made, and I think uh, uh, you know at the appropriate time, the Minister of uh, uh, Finance, uh, you know, would 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 make available those particular details. I think what gives us confidence is that every student who is qualifying, who is uh, 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 you know who's been admitted to a university or a Tivat college will be funded as of today. When it comes to NESPAS, is the department asking the question, are you unlocking and deriving a full value from the funding that is being spent on these students? We know that, yes, there is a, an incredible number of students that will successfully go through the system, yeah. but we also have those that battle to, to finish in record time yeah. for yeah. whatever reasons. And, yeah. and there are questions that are currently being asked about whether the funding model in, an, in and of itself is not necessarily seen as one that's sustainable. But for those that are, that are going through the system, yeah. are we getting enough value for that money? Yeah. And, you know, what happens because some of these uh, young people end up being unemployed? Yeah. Look, the first thing is that we have now opened opportunities to, uh, to more than 700,000 students at both university and at Tivet colleges. And as you said earlier, on more than 90% of those are at Tivet College level. The second thing, which is quite interesting, is that um, you know we did a study to look at the throughput rate uh, of students in universities, and what uh, uh, the, what the numbers are showing is that students who received government bursary, which is either from then TEFSA, uh, now NSFAS, uh, you know, uh, have done even much better uh, compared to students who are uh, self-funding, meaning those who uh, are being paid for by their parents. So that's the second thing. The third thing is that investment in education can never be regarded as a waste. Now, uh, yes, there are generally challenges of uh, unemployment in our country, and uh, you know, there could be a whole range of reasons that are attributed to uh, uh, you know, why our economy has not been yielding the necessary employment, but we believe that um, you know, comparatively speaking, we are one of the, uh, uh, you know, post-school education and training institution that produces quality graduates who are able to make an impact in the labor market, who are able to come up with entrepreneurial uh, initiatives to create employment, and who are also very innovative. Oh. And we think that, uh, uh, you know, the resources that the state is spending on the hundreds and thousands of students to take them to the universities and to Tivet colleges are not necessarily a waste. We believe that they will make an impact both in the short, medium and long term in our economy. All right. Mr. Manamela, let's leave it there for Thank tonight. You so much. The Deputy Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation, Buti Manamela.